Welcome to lecture three in the introduction to econometrics class. Now even though I'm trying to stick with intuition, real basic ideas that we can stick with, we have to get to the math behind what's going on and we're going to keep building on this a little bit at a time about the mathematical foundations. And so this is the third lecture. The first two we were making sure we had the intuition behind modeling data with lines and curves and we use lines with dummy variables and we use curves with uh, logarithms and quadratic and, and other polynomial formulas and today we're going to get into the math behind okay how do how do we really do this and this is extremely important information that in order to understand anything about um, doing a regression you really have to know these fundamentals well so we're going to look at a simple data set with four observations and as a good economist we can imagine we're trying to estimate the demand for a product price on the y-axis quantity on the x and to start I'm going to do the same thing we've done before I'm just going to look at these points and draw a line and so um, let me see how I do this in Excel. So insert shape the uh, same way and uh, I'm going to draw a line here that looks like it explains these points to me. Goes shoots right through the middle of the points. Now what's the equation of that line? Well the equation of that line would be P for Y axis equals 20 minus the slope is uh, rise over run 20 over 10 minus 2q so that's what my eyeball method line does now how can we tell whether this is a good line or not the standard way is to look at the residuals we want our residuals to be small don't we our errors and so what we do is we want to um, see how big all of our residuals are the actual minus the predicted and so let's just take this first point the actual quantity is 3 of that point and the actual price is 11 for that point so it's the actual price of 11 minus what would our equation predict well we plug in 3 for quantity and 20 minus 2 times 3 20 minus 6 gives us the prediction of 14 which we can actually see here on our line that it is actually uh, 14 but we're going to use equations to calculate them usually our predictions won't be whole numbers so our prediction there is 14 our residual is actual 11 minus 14 predicted minus 3 so I'm just going to type these residuals right here E uh, for my line uh, it's actually uh, minus 3 right because uh, it's 11 minus 14 is minus 3 uh, for the second point 6 and 11 6 11 that's this point the actual is 11 minus the predicted it turns out to be 8 both on the line and using the formula 11 minus 8 is positive 3 the next point 5 and 6 is this point 6 minus 10 the residuals minus 4 and uh, for our last point actuals 4 predicted 0 4 is our residual what we want to do is make those as small as possible and what we could do is say well let's let's make those uh, add up to a small number we want the total to be as small as possible we can't do that because most of the time reasonable looking lines they'll add up to 0 and they add up to 0 here minus 3 and 3 minus 4 and 4 uh, add up to 0 now there are some other reasons for doing what I'm about to do that are a little more technical but uh, rather than adding up the residuals uh, since they're usually going to add to something around zero then um, whoa, I just moved my graph and my line didn't go with it so I better move that okay uh, I'm going to square them and then add them up so e times e e squared minus 3 squared is 9 3 squared is 9 I better format these to where we can see them. There we go. 16 and 16. And if we add those up squared, we get the number 50. 
What we call this is the sum of squared residuals. Look at the formula right here. A residual is the actual minus the predicted, which sometimes we'll also write as the actual minus. What is the prediction here? Just the y-intercept, using the y-intercept and the slope. So um, in order to evaluate how good a regression is, we usually square the residuals, add them up, and we call this the residual sum of squares. Some books will call it the sum of squared residuals. All it is is square the residuals, add them up, right? I don't want to make it more complicated than it really is. But in evaluating this regression and how good of a job it does, what we really want to do is minimize that number 50, the sum of squared residuals, residual sum of squares. And so what we would like to do is find the line that makes the sum of the squared residuals as small as possible. And this method is called ordinary least squares. Least squares means we're making the sum of squared residuals the least, minimizing them. Sum of squared residuals. Um, ordinary, a little more technical term, but um, that just means we're not doing anything fancy. No fancy mathematical methods here in order to find uh, the equation. We're just going to use a little bit of calculation, a little bit of algebra. Uh, there are fancier methods that you can use to, to minimize those residuals. So ordinary least squares minimize the sum of squared residuals. Turns out if you want to find the line that does that, here are the formulas that we're going to use. These are called the least squares formula for a simple regression. A simple regression means we have one explanatory variable explaining one other variable. Uh, it gets more complicated if you have two or three explanatory variables. Like if we wanted to build in, um, like we did in the first lecture, domestic car and horsepower, these formulas get much more complicated. So what I'd like to do here is just uh, calculate the best slope using this formula and the best y-intercept using this formula uh, to see how they compare to my uh, estimate of the y-intercept at 20 and slope at minus 2. And we're going to compare to how good of a job does the best line do at minimizing those residuals or the sum of squared residuals really. So how do we use these uh, equations? Uh, let me go to another sheet here and I'll uh, paste these formulas so that we can see them also. I've got the quantity and the price here and I'm going to put the uh, average quantity and average price also 6 and 8 because we'll need those in these formulas here as well. So let's get started. Uh, what does the top of this formula do uh, say to do to find the best slope? yi is each of the numbers for the y variable quantity minus y bar, the average. Oh, sorry, actually not quantity, price. I apologize. Price on the y-axis. So each of the prices minus the average 8. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, yi minus y bar. Now the second part is going to be each of the x's minus its mean. These quantities minus the 6. So let's go ahead and set this up. I, xi minus x bar. And then in the bottom we're going to have to square those xi minus x bars. And so let's go ahead and make a little column for that. xi minus x bar sq for squared. Right? And since I'm about out of time on this video, I'm going to start and we're going to actually do these calculations in the next section.